Good afternoon, family, and welcome to the Critical Sense Making Sessions recap of episodes 21 through 30. I'll also be sharing a recap on our bonus episode we did last December. And so um, just lifting up the pearls of wisdom that I heard from our distinguished guest through their authentic stories and hoping that you all will listen in and make critical sense with your own journey. So in our bo bonus episode last December, we talked about death and losing a grandparent during a global pandemic. It was a space of radical healing for me, um, as well as my sister Lavette and my cousin Shamari to make critical sense of what we went through, um, to share our um, stories uh, about our grandmother, those memories that re really hold dear to our hearts. And just to have fun and thinking about all those times we had um, through the years with our grandmother. In episode 21, we heard from Af um, African American, African diaspora curator, um, art curator, Tiffany Ward. And she shared with us that we deserve wellness, we deserve rest, relaxation, and peace. She also talked about um, us always placing ourselves in a position to learn, and that's in any situation that you're in. You can learn something every day. She talked about she 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 talked about um, educating and equipping the village with the knowledge of self and the benefits of community. Um, no man can be an isle unto himself, and so she talked about really making sure that you're surrounded. Um, by the village, that you are working to help the village and that you uplift the village. Lastly, she talked about um, building solidarity through music, traditions, and culture to stand firm against colonialism, neoliberalism, and racism. Thank you, Tiffany, for sharing your authentic story with us. In episode 22, we heard from educator and principal Monique Walton, and her topic was leadership and dis distance learning. Mo shared with us that we need to build strong net support networks to encourage and empower each other. She talked about embracing the pivot when things get challenging, not looking at it like it's the end of the world, but being able to see the positives in each challenge that may come your way. Um, she said, don't be afraid to take risk. You can't be afraid to taste, take risk. If we are constantly trying to play it safe, we remain in survival mode, we remain um, in the routines, um, then we limit our own abilities. We limit God, right? And so she also talked about empowering student and family voice, really encouraging our students to develop their voice and their families to advocate for what it is they need um, from not just the educational system, but also from our political systems and our economical systems and all in between. She shared with us that edu educators need to focus on the standards of humanity and engagement. Um, really seeing the um, humanity in our students, especially our students of color um, and, and, and really Take it, make it an effort to engage with them on a, on a, in a positive way um, that uplifts and helps them to thrive. She talked about showing up in, at all spaces as your authentic self. Like we gotta take the mask off. We show up and we try to bend. What, Melissa Paris Harry talked about bending um, in the crooked room. And I encourage you, even when the room is crooked for you to stand firm on what you believe on your morals and your values. Um, Monique also shared that, sorry y'all, she also shared that educators need to humanize education. We can no longer look at kids as commodities, as a, a, a receptacle that, that we insert information to, but we need to help them um, develop those critical sense-making skills, those criticality skills, um, so that they're able to understand what is happening and how they can change their own trajectory. She talked about um, the importance um, to model for young people the behaviors and attitudes you want to see in them. If you respond to them in a 
negative manner or using deficit language, then guess what? They're going to pick up those. I think of the verse, train up a child in the way that they should go. And when they get old, they won't depart from it. And so that's even with negative behaviors. If I'm constantly modeling negative behaviors, they, they, do what I, they don't do what I say. They watch what I'm doing and they um, mimic that, right? And so we need to make sure that our behaviors and our attitudes are what we expect from them. Um, she talked about reflecting on and growing from our mistakes. It makes us stronger leaders. Don't always be defensive to, um, to, to um, feedback because sometimes that's gonna help you um, from the right person, right? And sometimes you have to listen because sometimes people are throwing shade. But I think from this point of view, when people give you feedback, it's to make you better, right? We can always, what's, what was the book from good to great? Um, we can, we're always striving to be great, right? Um, last, um, second to last, schools need to reinvent parent engagement. We need to create an experience. Oh, I thought that was just that. I thought that was an amazing piece of advice because it's not an experience. Most parents feel invisible. Most parents feel ignored. Um, and so it's important for us to create an experience where they want to be involved in their students' um, academic journey. And then lastly, she talked about being vocal and intentional about what works and what can work. So thank you, Principal Walton, the new principal at Mount Eaton High School um, for sharing your authentic story with us. In episode 23, we talked to educator, high, higher education um, professional, Cesar Ramos. And Cesar came in and shared his experience of working, of going to private schools as well as working for a private college. And he talked about being open to connecting with diverse individuals to help you learn how to navigate educational institutions landscape. So just not looking for the people that look like you, but those who are willing to give you support, even sometimes when you may not think you have anything in common, taking that um, step of faith to, 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 to find out who an individual it is, individual is and how they can help you. Every community and institution is different. Create programs that reflect and respond to the needs of all your community members. So realizing that it's not a one size fit all approach, it's not cookie cutter, but that each individual is unique to what they've experienced um, along their journeys, um, their gifts, their talents, everything that they bring with their um, person, their identity. And so it's important for us to create programming that reflects um, the diversity um, um, and I, the diverse, diversity of identities that show up with each student. Um, third, he talked about faculty and staff must work together to remove the stigma that student government, leadership, and student organizations are white-only spaces. So it's important for us to get involved, especially our students of color in the government process at schools, leadership, and student organizations, so that we learn how to use our voices to advocate for what we need. Those is what those, um, that is what those groups do, and so it's important for us to be involved and engaged in that work. Um, Cesar also talked about faculty and staff must work together to eradicate processes, policies, and requirements that limit our students' ability, access, and opportunities. Even during the pandemic, there were a lot of pluses, but a lot of things held back. And we, we saw that um, the pandemic, we were able to do stuff that they said we would never be able to do. They got it <laughs> turned around in two weeks. And so it's important for us to really look at our processes and analyze them and make sure they're not limiting our students, but they're helping our students gain access. Lastly, um, Cesar shared with us, faculty and staff must establish authentic relationships that empower students' voices and create access and opportunity for our students of color in white dominated spaces. Um, relationship building is critical to uh, working with students. Sometimes some students have been through so many adverse childhood experiences that it may take you a year or two just to break the ice. But it's important that we commit to to really building strong relationships with our students. So thank you, Cesar, for sharing a little bit of your authentic journey with our listeners. In episode 24, we talked to Kim Bozeman and she, a professional Kim Bozeman and her topic was unlearning to learn. So the first thing she shared with us was unlearning that America is for us. 
We must unlearn the lies and behaviors that keep us stagnant in walking and from walking in our destiny. Um, America has told us that we, we, are, we, are, we do not deserve to be um, in positions of power. We do not deserve a, not just an adequate education, um, but an education pretty much at all. They have trained us and conditioned us to believe that uh, how we show up and the poverty we in is our fault. And so we gotta unlearn this. She also shared about that, we, she shared we need to stop trying to assimilate into a system that is not meant for us. Um, I've been talking about that a lot, especially on my um, audio podcast, Revolutionary Rika Speaks Her Mind about trying to fit in and how do we build our own economic, political and educational systems. And so it's hard, like chasing that white gaze, I'm no longer doing it. I'm not gonna, I'll be truthful that I was climbing the ladder and I was trying to press toward that white gaze until I realized that my, eye, until my eyes were open and I realized that ain't even for me. That's a game that they have us playing that's unwinnable. So thank you, Kim, for sharing that. She also talked about needing to learn to be financially free and how to invest our wealth. She shared that we need to learn to work together and not against each other. So many of us are against each other. That needs to be my way. There's personal agendas getting in the way. There was an incident I was um, trying to mediate this past week where it really sounded like um, it wasn't about what it was really for. And so when I think about Juneteenth, I definitely feel like all of us were freed. And so how do we work together um, so that everybody's voice is heard, everybody has a seat at the table, and at the end of the day, community um, can be proud of what we put forth. She talked about learning about our history and experiences will help us forge a better path forward. You got to know who you are and where you come from. You have to know your family history. You have to understand that some trauma was passed down, um, his, not just historically, but intergenerationally. And then you may have created your own, created, um, you may have um, experienced your own trauma through some of that. And so really helping us to understand who we are. If you don't know who you are, just, you don't know where you're going. And so I think that was critical. Um, she talked about accepting and embracing failure to learn and grow. Like it's a, like we think about science, right? Science is all about failure. You know how many times um, scientists have to fail before they get it right? And actually they learn through these failures, right? And that's how they're able to eventually get to this place where whatever they created is, uh, whatever hypothesis they made finally comes out because they had to like go through all these different trials. And so it's important for us to do the same with the failures that we experience in life. Lastly, Kim shared that you have to love yourself and learn who you are, absolutely. If you don't love yourself, you can't love others. And when you do love yourself, you can love others because you start to understand this is who I am. This is who I was created to be, not who the world wants me to be and not who the world is telling me to be, but this is who I am. So that's that cultivating of not just you, but your, your purpose and, and, and experiencing radical healing. So thank you, Kim, for sharing your true authentic self with us story. Um, in episode 25, we heard from my former colleague and brother Joe Calderon, um, and his topic was slavery in the 21st century. Uh, people, most people are shocked when you say that there's no slavery now. Abs absolutely, there's slavery. We saw that when they told us what to do and when to do it and how to do it la last year. So Joe shared with us that we have to practice humility and show up to all spaces ready to learn. You can't go in thinking you know it all. Like you gotta be willing to say, I can share my expertise when needed, but at the same time, I'm here to learn. And so being ready for the opportunity to learn in all spaces, that's at the grocery store, that's at the stop sign, or when you're walking through the, um, through the lake or whatever, just being ready to learn in, in all instances. Um, one thing that he shared that I really love was healed people heal people. And I cannot, we talk about um, hurt people hurt people. And unless I heal myself, how do I know how to make you feel better? And when I am hurt, sometimes I hurt myself further. So it's important that radical healing is critical if you would like to grow. If you wanna thrive in life, you have to experience radical healing and then that opens it, opens it up for you to be able to cultivate your purpose. Joe also shared that we must educate and promote equity. We can no longer accept less than in any area of our lives, right? So 
promoting equity is not just giving everybody the same. It's finding out, building relationships and finding out what that individual needs to thrive. Um, I, we can no longer accept less than. We've done that. And that's what, we've been in survival mode. We're going to take these two pennies and stretch them and feed the whole community. We've been able to do that. But at the cost of burnout, at the cost of so many other things. So it's important that we do that. Um, he talked about identifying slavery where it exists and changing the mindset, realizing that if I don't, if literacy is so critical, right? If you gain literacy skills, you can go anywhere in the world. But if you refuse to read, if you refuse to have conversations and really work on your critical sense making skills, sometimes you're limited in what you can do and where you can go. Um, and so it's important for us to check change our mindsets around that. Joe talked about identifying racism in policy and demand that politicians accept the truth about the racism in the policy landscape. If I noticed last week I was in class and I was doing some work and I was reading these policies and on the surface, you see the word equity, you see the word diversity, you see these things and you, you think, oh, this is good, it says that. But when you read deeper or you read between the lines, it's not really that. It's a lot of racism happening. And so it's important for us to understand and be able to read critically and analyze what's being said and then seeing how it's being implemented, right? Because a lot of times, I think it's uh, Dr. Sean Jenright talks about the toxicity in our institutions, in our um, uh, um, practices and policies. And I can do my work individually, but if I'm going back into an institution where all the policies are steeped in toxicity, then guess what? Nothing's really going to change. So it's important for us to start to demand that they accept the truth and change it. Um, lastly, Joe talked about uh, needing to see about the needs of those on society's margins and disrupt the greed that keeps the majority of people of color in the cycle of poverty. Y'all, we got to advocate and most of us is still kind of in poverty ourselves, but we do, we're faring better than um, a lot of people. Um, in my audio podcast today, one of the subjects is homelessness. And so it's important for us not to advocate just for ourselves, but the needs of all people, those who have been abused, those in the foster care system, those in the school systems that are getting pushed to the pipeline, um, the school to prison pipeline, to the, to the, uh, the, the whole all of it, right? So it's important for us to um, really um, start to advocate for not just us in our communities, but all those on the um, margins of society. So thank you, Joe Calderon for coming in and sharing um, about your work, um, as well as um, sharing your authentic story. Um, in episode 26, I heard from my, my fellow classmate, Brittany Schlegwada, and she was talking about the construct of whiteness. This is a really good episode for you to listen to. She talked about um, that we all, that as a white person, we can, you can advocate for social justice issues, not just advocate, yeah, so that you can advocate. I have some other things, not just advocating, but being a co-conspirator willing to put my, my, my stuff on the line, knowing that I won't have the same repercussions that a person of color has, right? Um, she talked about listening and reading about the experiences of people of color. That's story, um, story and telling and listening to understand how even people that you feel like, oh, they're doing so well for themselves, they even in positions of, that we think are powerful, um, they're still experiencing mi microaggressions and policies that impact um, them daily. So yeah, it's, it's important for you to read about these experiences and then that will help you understand how you can advocate for social justice issues. She also shared that we must be willing to take an introspective look and assess our biases, behaviors, and values to change what is not right. Um, you gotta look, you gotta start with you. If I'm not right, how can I tell somebody else to change? And so it's important for me not to be perpetuating the same oppression that I'm saying I'm advocating for. Um, she talked about needing to recognize that systems, institutions, and policies need to be changed to bring about real equity. It's funny because her and Joe and a couple of the others, I think Cesar might have mentioned that, they talked about it. We got to change though. That's where the toxicity sits. So having PD is great. But if those people have to go back into the systems, institutions, and policies that are toxic, then it was, it was an experience, 
but, but I'm still working within these constraints, right? Um, she talked about needing to learn to manage and deal with the issue of race. It's an uncomfortable conversation, but we have to be comfortable with being uncomfortable because this whole country was built upon race, racism. Y'all can go look, it's a million zillion resources that tell you that. Uh, Brittany shared that when you see something, say something. And so a lot of times what we tend to do is ignore um, the behaviors or something, but it's important to call things out in the moment so that person understands that. I shared with uh, my class, must have been Friday night, that um, one of my former students' teachers basically said something that was really out of pocket and I checked her on it. And she went back and forth from me for almost two minutes to say she didn't say it. And so she finally said, um, well, I didn't mean that. So say that, say you didn't mean that, but don't say you did not say it. And so the, the student got to witnessing, witness me actually say something um, and advocate for the student's um, best interest. And so I think we all need to start doing that. Lastly, she talked about promoting relationships over reforms. Um, these reforms is about, it's all about capitalism, period. Relationship building is crucial. The only way to help kids who have been affected by adverse childhood experiences and traumatic experiences is to really get to know them as an individual, not on the surface, but getting to know them, actually showing them that you care. When they know that you care, you care and you're consistent, guess what? You start to build strong relationships and help that student move toward thriving in academic, um, um, in their academics. So thank you, Brittany Schlegwada, for being brave and coming on and sharing your story and your authentic truth about the construct of whiteness. In episode 27, I had um, Miss Shania Faye Swindle, AKA my daughter from camp from back in 20 some years ago, still have a great relationship with her. She talked about free thinking and spirituality. And it's funny because when we got off the call and later that week we talked about, oh, I had more to say and I did too. But I love that you can discuss spirituality and it's not a debate over this religious thing or that religious thing, but that this is what I need to get through. This is what I'm doing and the same thing as me. And so being respectful of that's what you choose, then that's what you choose. And so she talked about, we must remember who we are. That has come up throughout all of these conversations, knowing who you are. If you don't know who you are or who you, who you come from, it's gonna be hard for you to forge a path forward. She talked about needing to study and learn our roots to find out who we are, right? Just said it again, but without studying and knowing your roots, you don't know who you are. You're searching, you're searching for that. Once you can uncover that, your, your purpose sits inside of you. And so once I start to know who I am and then I can start doing radical healing and then I begin to learn who I am, who I am as a person, not who the world has told me, not who I have put the mask on to become, but who I am. Thank you. We must. She also shared that we must learn how to respond and not react in all situations. That emotional intelligence, right? We have been all our life, especially coming from the hood. You cannot let nobody, I'm just going to say it, punk you. It's just not, that's just not how you survive or you become a bully and it, it follows you, right? I mean, you become bullied and it follows you throughout your life. Um, and so learning when situations where I can walk away, when I don't have to respond, when I can ignore, or when I can just say that person is having a bad day, that's not even directed at me. They projecting their anger, their frustration, their, their uh, trauma onto me. I can choose, now if I react, now it blows up to something else. If I choose to respond, guess what? Respond in a gentle way, then I diffuse that anger. So thank you for that, Shanye. We talked about needing to assess um, our lives and weed out anything that is hindering us from our purpose. Unless you assess where you are, unless you assess who you hang around, what you eat, what you listen to, what you watch, you have to realize that stuff is hindering your purpose. And so I thank you for sharing that. Um, we must learn to question everything. Don't take nothing at face value, even with these vaccines. <laughs> you know I was going to say it. Um, I, don't, I, I question everything. And, and then I pray about it. And so this is perfect topic about spirituality, not just because they said, and so people will say, oh, they're a professional and they've been doing this all their lives. Yeah, but they were trained under this system, a system, a capitalistic system, the cognitive authority 
Well, um, deems what is um, accepted and what is not accepted. If I train under that, I would be an expert on that system too. That does not mean that it's always right. So question everything. Lastly, we all must advocate for love. Man, love is feeling your pain in my heart. And so if I advocate for love, I can't harm you. I'm trying to make sure you okay, just like I make sure I'm okay. And so I just want to thank Shanye for coming on and sharing her authentic truth around free thinking and spirituality. Um, in episode 28, I um, actually shared the song that I recorded last year um, called Becoming. And really it was me um, talking about being true to your authentic self. Man, we'll put on masks, we'll put on armor, we'll put on all, all these things to protect ourselves and to fit in so that we can climb this ladder. But I believe now that in every space, I need to make sure I'm being true to myself and that I'm showing up with my authentic self. Um, lastly, um, just moving with a spirit of excellence at whatever I do. You know, there's a scripture in Colossians 3, and I can't think of the verse right now, but working as I'm working for the Lord and not human masters. And if I take that into every moment when people aren't looking, right, that integrity, that I'm showing up and I'm making sure that everything I do is with a spirit of excellence, then guess what? I feel like I'm definitely thriving and working toward my purpose in life. So take a listen to my, um, to my becoming rap. Right. Y'all know when I was like seven, well, shoot, I guess when I was like 10, I thought I was going to be a rapper, a female gangstress rapper, just crazy. But I did. And then I think over the years, I just kind of walked away from that idea, maybe when I was like 20. And so um, in my classes last year, Dr. G pulled that rap. He, 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 he set it up and that rap came from out of my soul. And so it's just me sharing my story, um, my, my, uh, my academic journey, my own journey, um, and just the ways that um, I've tried to, you know, move around the obstacles to press toward the mark of the high calling, which is in Christ Jesus, you already know. Um, and then episode 28, or 29, that was 28, I'm sorry. In episode 28, um, I talked with Ashley Bell. Um, and Ashley is um, just, oh my God, an up and coming leader who uh, wanted to talk about trauma. Um, and most people don't wanna talk about their trauma. They are very uncomfortable. So I definitely wanna give a special shout out to Ashley for being willing to share a little bit of her authentic story about her trauma. She talked about almost, um, with that we all must learn coping, coping and emotional intelligence skills. You cannot go through life respond, reacting in every situation with your trauma at, at, as the basis, right? You gotta, we have to learn how to cope and we have to learn our emotional intelligence skills so we can respond um, instead of react. She talked about trying on a new technique such as deep breathing and positive affirmations. So sometimes counting to 10 or doing a couple of deep breaths will bring that anxiety down when you, somebody didn't anger at you, right? And then telling yourself you are worthy, you are, you are enough, right? Um, Ashley shared that you must work on yourself before you can help others. So in this work that, I, that I've done in community and the work that she's doing with transitional age youth, um, we're helping people. But if I haven't done what I'm telling you to do, I mean, it's almost like that parent child, right? Do as I say, not as I do, but you know them kids gonna do what you do. So if I can show you that I've helped myself and I've been working through and I'm actually, I mean, it's ongoing, right? The trauma work, but that I'm, if I'm asking you to do that, guess what I'm showing you how it's working for me. Um, she talks about being ready and being honest with ourselves and being okay with being vulnerable. Most of us, don't want to be vulnerable. Most of us do not want to be vulnerable. And so it's important that you allow yourself to be because that's the only way that you're going to be able to heal. And so we repress those feelings. I did it for a long time, didn't even know it was there till last year. And um, through that process was able to move through. And so now I can share out some of the stuff I've been with, um, been through um, in, in the situations where I need to share that. Um, Ashley also talked about that we must get the help we need. We must break the cycle and stigma of mental health. We hear that term mental health from 
I mean, we run from it, but we can't, we have, we, we can no longer afford to run from it. You have to start that radical healing process. It does not happen in one day. It does not happen in one therapy session. It doesn't happen with one strategy. It's a mix of strategies that you need. I don't know what those are for you, but I know that for me, there may be several, four, four or five different things I'm doing to work through some of my past trauma and some of my past um, hurt that I've experienced. And so in order to break the cycle, you have to be committed to working on that mental health and getting the help that you need. So thank you, Ashley. And then lastly, she talked about normalizing that it's okay to be vulnerable. Talk about it, show people how, show people, share your story with them so they understand um, how to be vulnerable and that it's okay. And lastly, in episode 30, I actually um, had my Moxie girls on there. They, we are all taking the um, doctoral program. We were missing two of them, um, two of our Moxie girls, but hopefully at the end of our program, which will be next year this time, we will have them all on and we'll be able to talk about the doctoral experience as black women. Um, that is my hope. So if they're listening, put that on your calendar for next, next May, early June end of May, early June. So on this episode, I had educators, um, Monique Walton and Pierre Anjali Laplace and Ty Day. Um, and we just really talked about, um, you know, black history. We talked about engaging in academy, in the academy. So that work we're doing with our doctoral program. We talked about women's history. We talked about the impacts of a dual pandemic, triple pandemic, some may say, while leading our communities. Um, and so in that episode, um, brutal and determined resistance. Um, I think that was James Baldwin. Um, and just really go back and listen to that. That was really powerful. We talked about resistance. We talked about humanizing leadership. Um, think, feel, act, which will impel you to action, right? We need protection. We talked about truth being five times bolder. So not just being bold, but five times bolder, standing in on the truth, and then you play how you practice. And as um, you know, former athletes ourselves, the way you practice is the way you're gonna play. And I know that Coach Hill, I don't know if he listens in, but Coach Hill used to tell us that all the time. And when we didn't play well, guess what? They, we got our butts beat. But them, but them practices that we played hard from for them two hours, an hour and a half, I can't remember how long it was. We made sure that we, we, we won those games. And so I just wanna thank you all, um, the Moxies for coming on and sharing their experiences with, the, with our audience. And I wanna say, I appreciate you all for listening in each month. Critical Sense Making Sessions are back. Today I had to do a recap only because I needed to um, had some um, hiccups in the schedule, but look forward, I look forward to sharing um, more authentic stories from our amazing, 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 amazing and um, human beings that I have in store for you. So each Sunday night at 6 p.m., please, please tune in. If not, listen to it during the week, leave comments. If you are interested, and being on a podcast, on a session, please email me at echambers7632 at gmail.com, or you can leave your email in the comments and I'll be sure to follow up with you. I hope that you learned something. I hope that you were able to make critical sense um, of what, not just what I said, but then also go back and listen and make critical sense of what our um, special guests have said. Um, thank you. You all have a great week and we'll see you next week.